quite a lot of electronic devices run off of DC or direct current, but our municipal electricity supply is AC or alternating current. It's important, therefore, to have a way to convert AC into DC. You can do that with a rectifier. In this video, we're going to learn about two different rectification circuits, a half-wave rectifier and a full-wave rectifier. Let's take a look at the circuits first, and then we'll go over to the bench and build some examples. Let's first take a look at a half-wave rectifier. You can build a half-wave rectifier using only a single diode. First, let's assume that we have an AC source, V. I've plotted V versus time, and we can see that it's sinusoidal. If the circuit didn't have a diode in it, then this would also represent the voltage across the load resistor. We want to make this a DC voltage rather than an AC voltage. The first step in doing that is to rectify it. A diode is an example of a nonlinear circuit element. To see what happens in this circuit, we have to consider when the voltage V is positive, and then consider when it's negative. Let's look at the positive half of the cycle first. If we call this node ground, and we call these two nodes V and V load, then we can think about what the diode does by comparing the two node voltages. A diode only allows current to pass in the forward direction, and it blocks current in the reverse direction. That means that if V is greater than V load, current's going to go through the diode. But if the load voltage is higher than V, then current's going to be blocked. Current always flows from high voltages down to low voltages. During the positive half cycle, current will flow through the diode. If the diode doesn't have any resistance, then the voltage across the load is going to resemble the voltage across the source. In reality, diodes are not completely ideal, so the load voltage will be slightly lower than the source voltage. For the purposes of this discussion, we can assume that the diode is ideal. That just means that its internally modeled mathematical resistance is zero ohms. Let's consider what happens during the negative half cycles. If the source voltage drops below zero, it means that current would like to flow counterclockwise through this circuit. However, that can't happen because the diode is going to block the current flow. Therefore, no current actually flows through the load resistor. If no current flows through the load resistor, then the voltage is zero. The waveform that we end up with here is still an AC signal because it's not constant with respect to time. But you can see that it's always on the positive side of the graph. So that's the first step in making a DC signal from an AC signal. Now let's take a look at a more complicated circuit with four diodes in order to take care of the other half of that cycle. This circuit is called a full wave rectifier. You need four diodes instead of just one. Let's see what happens when the source voltage V is on the positive half cycle and the negative half cycle. Let's label this node as ground. This node is then V. This node is also ground. If the voltage V is higher than ground, then current is going to flow through this diode, through the load resistor, and through this resistor to ground. The voltage at this node is lower than V. Since the voltage here is lower than V, current will not be flowing through this diode. Likewise, the voltage at this node is higher than ground. Since it's higher than ground, current's not going to be flowing through this diode. Current is going to be flowing through the load resistor every half cycle when the voltage V is positive. Let's now consider what happens during the negative half of each cycle when the voltage V drops below zero volts. Since the voltage V is below the ground voltage, we know that current is going to flow the opposite direction from this voltage source. Current is going to be flowing out of the source down here and back into the source up here. Current will flow through this diode, down through the load resistor, back along this line, and through this diode, and back to our source. Because this node is below ground, current is not going to be flowing through this diode. Because this node is very close to ground, and this node is below ground, current's not going to flow through this diode either. We therefore have two diodes on each positive half cycle, and we have two diodes on each negative half cycle. But what I'd like you to notice about this circuit is that no matter which of the four diodes happen to be on at any one time, the current through the load resistor is always in the same direction. During the positive half cycle of the source, current flowed downwards through the load resistor. During the negative half cycle of the source, current also flowed downwards through the load resistor. That means that the load voltage is always positive with respect to ground. That's exactly what the job of a rectifier is, to convert negative voltages into positive voltages and leave the positive voltages alone. 
Let's go on to the next step and improve our signal quality a little bit at the output side. If our goal is to make a DC power supply, these fluctuations over time are no good. One way to do that is to use a smoothing capacitor. Since the load voltage is always positive, it means that every positive half cycle of the source, we're going to have our capacitor charged up a little bit. And every negative half cycle of our source, our capacitor is going to get charged up a little bit too. Our capacitor is going to be discharged a little bit every half cycle as our load resistor uses some of its stored energy. So we're not going to completely eliminate the fluctuations in our output voltage, but the size of the capacitor will determine how much of these distortions remain. If our signal is varying very quickly and we use a large capacitor, then we're not going to be left with a very large fluctuation amplitude in the output. If we use a small capacitor, then the size of these fluctuations is going to be larger. In other words, when we're designing a rectifier, we can base our choice of this smoothing capacitor on the frequency and the size of the load resistor. If we use a capacitor that's too large, it's always going to work, but then that can be a little bit more expensive and an overkill for what we might be trying to accomplish. On the other hand, we don't want to choose a capacitor that's too small because then we'll be left with distortions in the output waveform. Let's go over to the bench and build both a half wave rectifier and a full wave rectifier to see how the circuit works in practice. I've built a half wave rectifier here on the breadboard. I've used an LED as the diode rather than an ordinary silicon diode. You wouldn't want to do that to build an actual rectifier circuit here, but I think it's instructive because this LED lights up when it's turned on. Here on the oscilloscope, I've plotted the output of a function generator here. The function generator is set to output a sine wave. We've hooked channel two of the oscilloscope up to the resistor so we can see what the output looks like. Let me go ahead and turn channel two on. We can see that our output is always positive. The output here is, of course, the blue line. Now, the reason why the output is not perfectly aligned with the input is because our diode has some voltage drop across it. The frequency that we're operating at right now is about 290 hertz. What I'm going to do is lower down the frequency and we should be able to see the LED blinking on and off when the frequency gets low enough. I have the function generator here set to one hertz and we can see the diode blinking on and off as the voltage hits each positive half cycle. Let's go ahead now and build the full wave rectifier and see how it looks. We've now built a full wave rectifier here on the breadboard and as you can see we have four diodes and a single load resistor. Here on this lower oscilloscope, I'm plotting the signal coming out of our function generator. Here on the upper oscilloscope, we're viewing the signal across the load resistor. The reason I've chosen to use two oscilloscopes rather than just one is because our load resistor is not connected to the common ground shared by these oscilloscopes in the function generator. Here on our second oscilloscope, the signal that we're viewing is actually the difference between channel one and channel two. What I'd like you to notice is that the time scales of these two oscilloscopes are identical. The signal here on the upper oscilloscope has a DC offset. Right in the middle is zero volts, and you can see that our signal across the load resistor is always positive. This rectifier is functioning just as it should. What I'm going to do now is to put a capacitor in parallel with our load resistor. This should smooth out the variations in our output signal. We now have a relatively constant DC offset here at our output. I'm going to pull the capacitor out of the circuit and then I'm going to turn the frequency of the function generator down so that we can see the diode switching on and off. Operating now at a frequency of about one hertz, we can see that indeed the diodes are switching on and off in pairs, just as we expect would happen in a full wave rectifier. This video is part of an organized sequence where I explore various AC and switching circuits. If you enjoyed it, then you might consider following the channel's playlist to learn more about these types of circuits.